I have to admit that I didn't have super high hopes for AMD Ryzen. I didn't think it would be anything like what it is. I've had a long history with AMD in terms of gaming and whatever, building PCs and whatnot. I, in fact, my first PC that I built was an AMD-based system. It was an AMD Phenom X4 945, clocking in at a sweet ass 3 gigahertz. That thing was badass. When I when I fucking bought that computer, this was a, my first PC that I like owned. That was my own. It was a pre-built, so it wasn't it wasn't particularly good. But for what it did, like it did what I wanted it to, which which admittedly was uh, at, at the time I, I wanted to play Minecraft. <laughs> so regardless of that, it, at the time it did what it what it needed to do. That little X4 945 kicked some serious ass. It even brought me into the YouTube game when I was able. It was enough to be able to edit simple videos in Sony Vegas, and you know it. it it didn't do great now looking back on it, but of course at the time I didn't know that and it was still the best computer that I had ever used in and like of anyone's really. It was the first computer that I purchased for myself. I purchased it with decent specs or what I thought were decent specs back when I thought um back when I back when I thought RAM was like if you had a lot of RAM that that was good. So back then it was actually, you know, pretty good for me. And as I said, it brought me into the YouTube game where I was able to start making videos. And here I am today running stuff that's a lot fucking better than that and still kind of a hodgepodge. Not gonna fucking lie, it's a little bit of a mess and it's constantly changing. But regardless, that's part of the fun of building PCs and PC gaming. So of course then, down the line, I ended up upgrading to an AMD FX8320, which... <sighs> Hold on, fam. I think I still got sitting over here. Hold up. So here we have an AMD FX 8320 processor. Let's take a look. Oh, that thing's pretty. That thing's pretty nice. 2011 AMD. Diffused in Germany, made in Malaysia. It's fucking massive. Look at that shit. Still trying to autofocus my face. Oh, and dropped it. <laughs> Fuck. Is it okay? I think it landed heat spreader up so we should be all right so anyways this is the first upgrade that i ever purchased not upgrade for my pc technically the first one i bought was a graphics card because it turned out the fucking radeon hd 40 5450 was fucking trash but regardless of that this is the first major upgrade when i fucking started playing battlefield 4 when that launched and i realized all of a sudden oh my god this is fucking terrible. So I bought this bad boy, this thing coming in, I think it was, I think this is around 3.2 gigahertz base or something like that. I don't remember entirely. Slapped it on the cheapest fucking motherboard I could possibly find on the market, which is, was fine at the time. It's kind of a piece of trash now because something went wrong with it and it can't maintain this thing at a stable clock speed for whatever reason. But regardless of that, that was, you know, that was my first upgrade. I went up to AMD because it was really within my limited price range where I was making like maybe a hundred bucks a week working at a grocery store. So after this, I was of course looking and started, like I did, I had enough knowledge to know that this was a limiting factor still, despite the fact that it was a pretty big upgrade from the X4, I still needed something better. So staying in the vein of AMD processors and wanting to stay in that vein of sort of fucking affordable and whatnot, I decided and made the poor choice of upgrading to the AMD FX 9590. For those of you who don't know, this was touted as the first processor to be able to hit 5 gigahertz in any sort of consistent manner. And let me tell you, my, my computer is my computer is a space heater now, but back then, holy oh, shit. shit. And let me tell you, let me tell you, fam, for starters, that thing never hit 5 gigahertz. It just sat at that 4.7, couldn't get a stable overclock on it. Even with, it was a, it was a fucking, like, Asus Gigabyte 990F, or Asus, Asus, Asus Gigabyte, motherfuckers, that makes sense. Asus FX 9590, fucking, it was the best motherboard I could fucking buy for that processor at the time. I mean, maybe there are better 99, 990FX boards, whatever now but uh, for starters why the fuck are they still making boards for that but regardless of that it still at 4.7 gigahertz with its you know eight cores 
was pretty not great. But regardless, this, this, this is getting off fucking off track. This is so fucking cool. Look at the fucking pins. Like I know, like this thing is massive, but like regardless, it's a it's a fucking piece of it's beautiful. But today on the topic of AMD Ryzen. So over the past couple hours, I've been watching videos and sort of things that are recapping a lot of the press event that AMD recently held on Ryzen as today is the official launch of Ryzen, which supposedly it's in stock at numerous stores in my area, namely Micro Center. And it's surprisingly not marked the fuck up. It's actually at those MSRPs that fucking AMD set, like actually 329 for the 1700, fucking whatever 399 for the 1700x and then uh, fucking 500 or 499 for the 1800x is there an x at the end of it i don't fucking know dude it's actually being sold at those prices despite today being the launch day which is mind-boggling to me not that i'm fucking complaining but that's dope as hell so regardless the fucking cpus have launched today and much to my surprise, I might actually buy one. So at the current time, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain why I would potentially consider buying one of these when I'm currently running an i7 6700K in my system, which for the most part is more than ample for everything that I do. Now, the one area that the thing falls short is things like video encoding and live streaming. Its Cinebench score is only sitting around 800, which seems a little bit odd considering that's lower than the average Cinebench score for uh, 6700K, but I can kind of attribute that over to overheating because I'm pretty sure I didn't put enough fucking thermal paste on my cooler. So, yep, and I'm fucking lazy so I won't fix it. It still doesn't get like dangerously hot, but it, it might be enough to cause some problems and that's basically it so video encoding which of course contributes into live streaming which is the biggest one for me i mean obviously if it takes an extra five minutes to render a video i don't really give a fuck but since i have been trying to live stream a lot more and i really enjoy doing that and getting that sort of hands-on interaction with viewers and shit like that I have been trying to be able to consistently live stream and one of the things that makes that very difficult is the fact that this processor is a bit lacking on multi-core performance. It's not bad by any stretch, but it pales in comparison to even the lowest tier of AMD's new lineup. Most likely I would buy the 1700 series whatever fucking processor since that's, you know, it's still a little bit over $300, roughly what I paid. Um, at the uh, micro center sort of sells Intel processors at roughly like wholesale price They probably obviously they make some sort of margin on it So it's roughly in the same price range as what I'm running in my system currently And if I were to pair that up with obviously some decent DDR4 memory and You know s s fucking just stick a decent cooler on it It seems like the stock cooler that these CPUs come with is actually pretty damn good not to mention the motherboards look sexy as fuck Fuck. So I'll be able to actually, you know, build something pretty decent out of it. And of course, that would very heavily benefit my live streaming performance and even, you know, video editing. Now, as far as gaming goes, it's not entirely the same story. While I probably won't see any significant performance decreases, I would, it wouldn't necessarily improve gaming performance since games are obviously sort of leveraging no more than four cores typically. Obviously, there are exceptions to that rule. And getting more than four cores in a system isn't necessarily the best since you know typically when people are building pcs and they're just all they're planning on doing is playing games or just like streaming media or whatever everyone just sort of recommends you know if you're trying if you're on a budget an i5 you know quad core like real physical four cores and with no hyper threading so then obviously when you get into bigger heavier stuff like video production live streaming stuff like that they oftentimes recommend you know an i7 because it's got those four physical cores with hyper threading so eight threads and that heavily benefits video encoding to an actually surprisingly significant degree now of course then we're looking at ryzen where it has four physical cores and fucking 16 threads. The closest counterpart to that in the current lineup of Intel CPUs is the i7-6700, 6700K, you fucking retard, is the i7-6900K, a $1,000 processor. That's fucking mind boggling and it outperforms it. It's crazy. It's absolutely fucking insane what AMD's managed to do with this, this fucking chipset 
whatever if it's chipset these cpus whatever shit it's all fucking interchangeable it's absolutely mind-boggling what they've been able to do and the fact that they were able to then price it as competitively as they have to the point where if once these are more readily in consumer hands, they continue to perform in the way that they've shown in all of these tests at their press event. And yes, there were actual tests that, you know, you could go or people at the event could go and like, you know, benchmark them. They, they had a Cinebench test. And obviously a lot of these scores are not everything. Anyone who fucking knows anything about performance knows that real world performance is a lot different than sy synthetic performance, which is what Cinebench is. But if you compare Cinebench scores from, you know, currently widely available processors and you compare it to Ryzen, that will give you a fairly decent idea of what to expect. So needless to say, I'm very impressed. I'm very happy that AMD has managed to come back into the processor market with something actually competitive, not only from a pricing standpoint, but from a performance standpoint as well, considering that before this, the only thing they really had going for them was every one of their processors was several hundred dollars cheaper. And while these processors are still maintaining that price difference, they are, in a lot of cases, at least synthetically, kicking the ass of Intel on a performance side. Which another thing that makes me excited about that is the fact that this might make Intel actually fucking do something for once. They might actually, you know, have to abandon that, like, that fucking, whatever, that... The, 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 the Moore's, it's not Moore's Law, you dip. Is it Moore's Law? I don't fucking know. Give me a sec. It, it is Moore's Law. So the, it, it might make them not ha follow that anymore. It might make them actually make something that jumps massively ahead of the fucking competition if they even have the tech to do that. We don't know if they do or not. But then again, maybe Intel will just hold the sort of reigning champion of single po core performances they have with their, you know, quad core i7s for the longest fucking time, almost as long as I can remember building computers and whatnot. Intel definitely held that lead. So for all we know, that might just be what they end up sticking with. Anyways, guys, I know this was a bit of a fucking shitty video and it was you know it was a little bit scatterbrained and kind of i'm just kind of like fucking excited here i'm just like holy shit this is awesome amd actually made something like they didn't they hyped it up and then it was fucking worth it and <laughs> unlike unlike the fucking r9 fury holy shit and it was it was it was fucking good like th this isn't this isn't some apu bullshit where they're like it has 12 cores but four of those cores are actually uh, uh gpu cores and uh then, then the, the eight CPU cores are actually not that good, and it's 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 it'll go in your debt book. Part of me was a little bit afraid that once these CPUs actually launched, they would see very poor performance returns, or not necessarily poor, but very underwhelming, considering especially the fact that AMD wasn't you know putting out tons of fucking hype around the launch of it. But obviously, that's, you know, we, we've been pleasantly surprised thus far. But of course, we'll have to wait until these things get into the hands of regular consumers and reviewers and stuff like that, which of course, there probably are CPUs in the hands of reviewers at this very moment. And we'll have to see how they actually perform in the real world with, you know, rendering and shit like that. And even gameplay performance. I am curious to see how it would compare to something like a quad core i7. Since, you know, that if I do upgrade, which I might do, would be the most accurate representation of what I'd be getting. Because obviously I don't, I don't want to necessarily downgrade my gaming performance. I'd like to increase the the video encoding performance of my current system that's the end goal if i can stay roughly in the same area with you know gaming performance that then that would be pretty fuck pretty fucking dope dude anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video and shout out to the fact that i've been waving this around and talking about ryzen as if it's a ryzen cpu nope this is a fucking 8320 and it's in a box yeah see, 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 see you later